get out of your attention. We'll start this program. My name is Mark Bell. I'm executive director of the Lower Wisconsin State Riverway Board. And on behalf of the board, we'd like to welcome you to the 25th anniversary of the Lower Wisconsin State Riverway and Riverway Board. Thank you all for attending today to help us celebrate this historic event. Uh, just a couple of quick housekeeping things. Feel free to help yourself to the hors d'oeuvres and the soft drinks and coffee and there is a cash bar. Bathrooms are down the hall to the left or you can go outside uh, to the back one and you'll see another bathroom there. Not for free! <laughs>
so often remember, so many times that the memories are warm. Daddy, won't you take me back to Willowbird County, down by the Green River where Paradise lay? I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late in asking. This to be my school. You can trade. 
grace and tracks of me all across the memories my heart recalls. And I'm just a refugee. Won't you say? Even the strongest soldier falls. I'm only halfway home. I got a journey on to where I'll find the things I have lost. Allows us to promote and market 
this great resource and to bring visitors to this area so they tell others to come and experience this great recreational amenity that we do have. One of the things that we just did to promote this area that happened just today in the Milwaukee Journal, we do something called the Fun Times. If you get a chance to check out the Milwaukee Journal, there's a huge article in here in the Fun Times. It's all about experiencing the lower Wisconsin Riverway and experiencing scenic 60 and taking a drive or a canoe or any of the experiences that you could have along this area from Sauk City all the way down to Prairie Sheen. So we constantly want to promote this. I think this area is one of the best fall drives in the state. We start thinking about fall scenic drives. Fall drives are one of the things that we do own in the state when we look at the Midwest as far as comparing ourselves to the other states. People look upon Wisconsin as the number one travel destination for fall, for fall drives, and fall experiences. And I can't think of a better place. Yeah, there's those door counties and those bay fields and things like that that are pretty cool, but there's nothing as cool as this down here with the scenic 16 experiencing the lower Wisconsin Riverway. So thank you for everything you do. Thank you for the board, for Mark, and for everybody else that's involved with this. Thank you.
I guess the other thing I'd like to mention, which has been a highlight of my career, and Mark alluded to it, and again, these uh, gentlemen here on the stage have a lot of stories to tell about this, and that is the creation of the Wisconsin uh, Stewardship Program, which is now in its 32nd or 33rd year, I believe. What a tremendous conservation achievement uh, anywhere in the country, if not the world, is to have the type of dedication and commitment from our legislators and citizens to actually uh, set aside the funding to be able to uh, create, acquire, and manage properties across the state, such as the Lower Wisconsin Riverway. Since the stewardship program went into effect in uh, 1980, uh, we've been able to acquire over 22,000 acres along the Riverway. Uh, and the whole boundary for the Riverway is something like uh, over 80,000 uh, acres along the 92 miles of, of river that we have here. So, uh, boy, Governor Thompson, Senator Schultz, Representative Black, thank you on behalf of the department. And I know so many hunters and anglers and park users and canoeists and people that just love to go and take a hike and watch wildlife. Stewardship program has been a tremendous asset to this state. Well, quickly to conclude and look ahead a little bit, um, we're in the middle of uh, updating and redoing the master plan for the property. Uh, some of you may have been involved up to this point in some input and listening sessions. Uh, there'll be more uh, direct public input uh, probably uh, come late winter, early spring when they're ready to come out with some additional information. So I would encourage everyone that loves this great place to uh, follow that planning process. You can do it online uh, through the department's website and to uh, pay, uh, uh, pay attention to when we hold public actual face-to-face -face input sessions and get your input into this uh, riverway and uh, help the department and help everybody who loves the riverway to make it even a better, better place. So with that, I'll just conclude by saying uh, this is a great partnership. Uh, we appreciate all the work that everyone has done just this turnout on a beautiful Sunday afternoon uh, to celebrate this riverway and indicates how important this is to the outdoor traditions and outdoor ethics and just the love of our wonderful state and our local communities along this riverway. So thank you very much.
have this natural wonder, 92 mile free flowing river coursing through a landscape that in many ways has changed little over the centuries. We have the riverway law and administrative rules that seek to protect the river's scenic and natural beauty, and we have the cultural treasures that create a sense of place, and if we sit still enough, a sense of awe for the beauty of this creation. We celebrate all this today. In gratitude, we're thankful. We're thankful for the people with the vision and foresight to recognize that to do the best thing for the people of Wisconsin, we sometimes have to look beyond our own ideologies and recognize that compromise is not a dirty thing. In a world of diverse viewpoints, compromise is how we get things done. And we're thankful for those like Governor Thompson, and Senator Schultz, and Representative Black, who accomplished the hard work of compromise 25 years ago to pass the law the riverway. And we're thankful for those who administer the law in the past, present, and hopefully the future. The members of the Riverway Board, it's been my privilege to work with and to observe for the last 25 years uh, when I was in the news media. Their dedication through the years has been a key to the project's success and to its acceptance. And especially we're grateful to Executive Director Mark Cup. If there's a human face for the riverway, Mark is it. And those of us on the board, we know when it's a special occasion. It's not when Mark wears a suit coat and a tie. <laughs> it's, it's when he wears long pants. <laughs> First time we've seen those since the snow melt. <laughs> and in his work, Mark has been capably assisted by Marcia Curtis, the Riverway Board's office associate, and her predecessors. And we're thankful to them for their work as well. And for the DNR uh, managers, foresters, wardens, work crew members who have capably taken care of the job of managing this resource working closely with us on the board. <coughs> thankful for that. We're thankful for other essential partners to the project, the private landowners, the local governments, the businesses like the Wisconsin Riverside Resort uh, that have flourished by working within the framework of the laws seeding protections to accomplish some really wonderful things. We're thankful to the friends of the lower Wisconsin Riverway flow their dedication to the project uh, and for their vigilance when threats to the river are identified and perceived. <laughs> and we're thankful for their help on the various cleanup projects. Tim and his crew are always the first to volunteer. We're really appreciative. We're also thankful to other volunteers, such as the work crews from Cultural Landscape Legacies, that have been instrumental in the work to maintain the scores of effigy models within this project boundary. And as we are the smallest agency of state government, we are also thankful to the Department of Tourism for their administrative support and their promotional support through the years. And last but not least, we are thankful to the public. Wisconsin public for your acceptance and support of this project through the years. And this was very much manifest during the past few years when we received thousands of communications supporting the riverway and opposing the spread of Frank Sand Mining into the river corridor. So this is a day for celebration, for gratitude. It's also a day for rededication. I, I would close by saying our work is never really completed. The project has required continued vigilance and dedication. And if we don't, if we do take the riverway for granted, then we have danger of losing it. Things change over 25 years, 
But I want to say that those who drafted and passed the enabling legislation at the beginning essentially got it right. Some things have been amended since that time, and our board is now unanimous in our opinion that a later revision to the law uh, that overturned the original prohibition of mining of any type within the riverway uh, has opened the door to the threat of frack sandwich. And we believe that we need a legislative remedy to this issue. So we're going to ask you all to do what you can to uh, help us with the current legislature. Um, so I guess that's pretty much it. Because I 
used the river myself extensively with my family and when I was a scout growing up. Uh, I read the journals of Father Marquette and Joliet as they went down this portion of the river. And it struck me that this river looked virtually the same as it did back there in the 17th century when it came down. Obviously, this place wasn't here to run bridges and all of that. But for the vast majority of this thread of the river, it was as the, those people saw it. And I felt that we really had to find a way to make this work. Uh, that had struck me, and at, at the time I believe Mark was working as an administrative assistant for Dick Cruel, who is long gone now, but a real hero in this process too, is it struck me that the people who were interested in the project were talking by each other. Basically, the local people here wanted the riverway to be as it was in the uh, late 80s. Uh, the people who were pushing the recreational end of it wanted it to stay this way. They weren't looking for any uh, tearing down bridges or any of this stuff. But they wanted to be able to replicate this uh, experience. It occurred to me that we've got to find a way to talk together about this. And we were making some pretty significant pro uh, uh, progress towards this. Then there was another group that uh, came into the game called Plow. Uh, the private landowners in uh, Wisconsin. And uh, from their standpoint, they did not want the riverway to happen. But they again, like the federal government, provided the catalyst for things to happen. Because uh, Plow was equally as concerned about local regulation as were the, uh, uh, the, the local people concerned about federal and state regulation. Uh, the environmental movement, the people that wanted to use the river, uh, wanted and they were concerned about this too. Uh, so basically what happened was is that the local officials contacted uh, Senator Cruel and Dale Schultz and prevailed upon them to talk to the governor who's sitting here uh, 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 today to appoint a landowner's advisory committee to basically come up with what the landowners wanted. <coughs> and I had the uh, great opportunity to go down to Muscadet as the only public employee uh, that was allowed in. So I don't know if they thought I was a like, <laughs> sister or whatever. And, and I got my instructions uh, from the, the secretary uh, exactly what I should do. And I talked to uh, Spencer Black and some of people from uh, other people like that and found out what their needs were to have something that they could support. Uh, the, the committee met and it was uh, an exciting time, you know, to say that. Unfortunately, uh, nobody mentioned me and I was able to get out of town. <laughs> and uh, this provided the uh, material for us, and uh, us and Eric Mickey, Mark and I, and a couple other people, put down on paper something that looked good. And the Paul people, uh, based on that Paul people, excuse me, the local landowners advisory committee did not find anything to seriously object to it. And this provided them the cover for the legislators who had uh, their, their constituencies to deal with to go to the governor and say, we've got something that these two constituencies will support. You know, it would really be nice if we could do something like that today, where you take something where everybody has such strong feelings about it, and there were very strong feelings about this on both of the parties, and say, well, we've got something we think we can work. And Basically, it was able, they were able to pass it through the legislature, and the governor had committed that he would sign something that the local people approved of and could pass the legislature. And, and one of the things that just thrills me about this is, is that I always felt in working through this that this was going to become an important tourist opportunity for the, you know, to help the economy in this local area. And this facility didn't exist back when we were doing it. So there's other facilities now that provide people an opportunity to come here. And basically, uh, everybody here uh, who's in the room and cares about this uh, and has worked with the legislature, the local zoning administrators, the uh, clubs, and the various people, you all owe yourself an applause. So thank you very much.
Spencer Black, who uh, served in the Assembly from 1985 to 2011 as Chairman of the National Resources Committee and led a lot of major environmental initiatives in Wisconsin during that span. Particularly as it relates to the Riverway, the Knowles Nelson Stewardship Fund is an important initiative, a recycling program that we have in the state of Wisconsin. And we could go on and on to list Representative Black's accomplishments for the environment and natural resources protection in Wisconsin. He has a long history with the Riverway, going back to the DNR appointed Citizens Advisory Committee when uh, he worked for the Sierra Club and was actually a representative of the Sierra Club on that advisory committee back to probably 1983 or so. And then, of course, was a key figure in the compromise and formation of the law, a very passionate advocate for the Riverway, understood what an historic project this would have the potential to be. He was a champion of the Riverway in the legislature. Any time there was an issue, we could always count on Representative Black to have our backs when we needed it. Uh, certainly, it will go down in the annals of Wisconsin's history as one of our great environmental leaders, and I think he should be in the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame. Perhaps that's in the words. Ladies and gentlemen, Spencer Black.
And this law, I think, will help ensure that this riverway will remain that way for many years to come. And that is something well worth celebrating. There's something else that I think is worth celebrating, too, something that Jim alluded to. Those of you who have even a passing acquaintance with the political history of the time will know that uh, Senator Schultz, Governor Thompson, and I didn't totally agree on every single political issue. And uh, this is one we didn't agree on at first. We, but we did something that isn't done often enough today. That is, we're willing to listen to each other, talk to each other, try to understand the other's perspective and do something God forbid called compromise. And the result was a law that stood the test of time. So I think today we celebrate two things. We celebrate the stewardship of this wonderful resource and we celebrate the law itself, which is a product of people who decided that it was more important to get something done than to throw brick racks at the other guy. One of my favorite quotes, and I know it's a favorite of um, Mark Cup, is from Aldo Leopold. And that quote begins with, yet there remains a river. And it's not my hope because of the Riverway Law, but not just because of the law, but because of the dedication of people in this room and across the state that not just for 25 years, but for 25 generations, people will have the opportunity to appreciate the natural heritage, the beauty, the recreational opportunities that this river affords. And that is something that we celebrate. Thank you.
making the riverway all that it is today. I see many fellow elected officials from the state and local government uh, are here today, and I see the faces of those who are here simply because they love the riverway. Whether they do so as a paddler, or an angler, or a hunter, hiker, bird watcher, prairie enthusiast, many are members of, uh, of the Friends of the Lower Wisconsin Riverway, better known as the Dimension as Flo. I'm also privileged to share the stage uh, with my good friends, former State Representative Spencer Black and Governor Tommy Thompson, uh, who incidentally is the best damn governor the state of Wisconsin ever had. <laughs> Yeah, that 
faces here in the room today. And in my mind, the most important group, that being landowners of the Lower Wisconsin State Riverway. It was the private property owners who have made the sacrifices for the greater good over the years. These folks have loved their land and have demonstrated time and again tremendous stewardship. Most riverway landowners understand the significance of owning property in this 23rd sound place we call the Lower Wisconsin River Valley. While not everyone was keen on the concept of land use regulation, and perhaps understandably so, the fact remains the riverway property owners have accepted that fact, and certainly uh, now understand and, and appreciate the fact that we require permits and oversight from the riverway board. The cooperation of landowners uh, is demonstrated by the minimal number of problems encountered these days by the board. So to all of you riverway property owners, I want to say uh, I offer my personal thanks for your contributions to the success of this riverway project. I encourage the rest of you to take the time to shake the hand of these landowners and offer your appreciation for their sacrifices as well. I'm sure many of you here today will share this sentiment with me. How can this be the 25th anniversary of the Riverway? Where's the time gone? It's so quickly. As I reflect back on those times in the, in the 1980s, I can't help but be amazed at how far we have come. 1988, when the DNR released the final environmental impact statement for the Riverway, there was great polarization between uh, proponents of the DNR plan and those who were vehemently opposed. I remember one night here in Spring Green at uh, the high school, and I kind of wondered if whether people were going to come to blows. The members of the DNR Citizens Advisory Committee, who worked long and hard for over five years, were pitted against some local residents who are ardently against land use regulation of any kind. There was plenty of hard rhetoric from both sides and literal threats of violence, not only here at Spring Green, but at other meetings. But then the local officials, uh, rather the local legislative delegation, coalesced around the concept of establishing a separate advisory committee, as Jim Kurtz has pointed out, comprised purely of local elected officials from the counties, towns, village, cities, along the riverway, not in any partisan manner, but just as local officials, people who had earned the respect uh, election after election from their uh, constituents. Every municipality sent at least one delegate to the local official, officials advisory committee meetings, and that group met for about four or five months in the summer and in the fall of 1988. The group went through the DNR plan, page by page, line by line, accepting certain aspects of the proposal and expressing opposition to others. In the end, the LOAC ended up bridging the great divide between the two opposing sides, and enabling uh, the Southwest Legislative Delegation to offer an alternative version of what the uh, Riverway should look like, and as been mentioned, the compromise was struck, which led to the creation of the new state agency at the Riverway Board to administer the scenic protection regulation while the DNR maintained their traditional areas of responsibility in the project area. These enlightened local leaders on the board have made tough decisions for the past 25 years and have not wavered from their mission to protect both scenic beauty and private property rights. As I learned recently, these folks ain't getting rich either doing this. When the board started in 1989, the per diem for meetings was $25. Tommy, get this. Now in 
2014, it's still $25,000. <laughs> me. And through uh, extraordinary commitment, board members such as my good friend up here in front, Vince Slemix, uh, a steady and wise leader in those early years, Glenn Banneker of Bridgeport, who served on the CAC, the LOAC, and then on the board for 16 years. Jim Staff of Sauk City, who took over from Vince's chair and guided the agency for the next dozen years. Bob Carey of Blue River uh, was an original member of the board and is now back for another stint as Grant County representative. Bill Lundberg, who is the longest, has the longest tenure on the board, served as the original appointee and continued for 23 years, including several terms as chair. These and many other dedicated board members <coughs> deserve our thanks. The board has been quite remarkable. As the small state agency, Mark and his able assistant, Marsha Curtis, do great things uh, for an office of two and an annual budget of a meager $200,000. That's my good friend, uh, Dave Martin, who's here today, who is also back for another stint on the board as the Richland County representative, has often said the Riverway Board should be touted as a model of efficiency for state government. And uh, we'd be better off as a state if other agencies follow the board's lead in accomplishing great things with limited resources. As I look back to 25 years ago, I find it hard to believe that the members of the private landowners of Wisconsin Plow, as has been mentioned, an organization in the, would be in the same uh, room as members of the Bowl. Certainly that would have been a volatile situation back in the day. But the fact that the harsh rhetoric has subsided, the victory all previously spewed has that, that Plow and Flow can work together on riverway uh, cleanups is evidence of evolving attitudes about this wonderful resource, the riverway. The fears that some of the uh, some that the riverway would become uh, overcome with onerous regulations and heavy-handed bureaucracy has been laid. Structures are being built. Timber is being harvested. Prairies are being maintained. Roads are being improved, and bridges are being built. The riverway board, in cooperation with landowners and the DNR, has demonstrated the proper way to govern, which is based on transparency in decision making, a commitment to its statutory duties, and a healthy respect for the rights of the constituency that it serves. I would like to leave you with one thought today, and that is a quotation from uh, Wisconsin's own Gaylord Nelson, former governor and U.S. senator, who once said, the ultimate test of a man's conscience may be his willingness to sacrifice something today for future generations whose words of thanks he will never hear. While I can't speak for future generations, I can say here now to all who contributed to the success of the Riverway, particularly Riverway landowners, thank you for your sacrifices. I fervently believe that 25 years from now there will be another celebration for the golden anniversary of the Riverway. And the speakers at that event will be extolling the virtues of those who created this project, nurturing it along, kept it moving forward, and adapting to changes in the natural world as well as the political landscape. And that will be a great thing. And I want to thank you all for being here today. And I want to thank the board for organizing this terrific event. Thank you so very much.
He was elected to the assembly in 1966, straight out of law school, and has uh, served in the assembly until he was elected governor in, in 1986. Uh, served as assembly minority, minority leader for several years. As some of you may know, he is the longest, was the longest serving governor in the history of the state of Wisconsin. And in the history of the United States of America, the 10th longest serving governor ever. He was appointed by former President George Bush to be Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services in 2001. And regrettably for the state of Wisconsin, meant he left his gubernatorial seat, uh, but then served in the Bush administration until 2005. And since that time, has involved, been involved in various private business ventures and, and public service. During his tenure as governor, there were many notable achievements, such as in the areas of welfare reform, transportation, education, and environmental issues. Of particular interest to us today is the key role that he played and the leadership he provided in creation of the Lower Wisconsin State Riverway and Riverway Board. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in extending a warm welcome to one of my political heroes, the former governor of the great state of Wisconsin, Tommy G. I want you to listen to what I have to say. So I want you all now to stand up 
and turn around and shake hands with each person to your left or right and say thank you because all of you are responsible for what we're doing here today. So stand up and say thank you to each other. <laughs> that the 
started that legislation. Governor Nelson and Democrats started a program known as Corbin. The Boston State Land purchase of the program was expanded greatly under Governor Nelson. It was set up to assist local municipalities with land acquisition and pollution control. It was also Governor Nelson who set up the Department of Natural Resources when I was in the legislature. It was also during this time that Wisconsin's very own wild and scenic river program was enacted. And none other than David Martin, who's here today, my good friend, was the author of that legislation. <laughs> and I voted with him. And he now was on the roadway board. There's only a few of the important legislative actions that took place in the environmental decade that have had long-lasting positive effects on the state, on the environment, and making this a pristine state as much as possible. Some of the programs enacted at that time serve as building blocks and models for future policies that the legislature passed and I was happy to be able to enact I knew that government is best served when local people like you, every single one of you, are involved in the decision making process and feel that you are part of the government, not separate. And one of the innovations of my administration was to take state government to the people by requiring all cabinet officials and key players in the government to go out every summer on tour with me instead of being sequestered in Madison. And each year, we would set a schedule of places to go to the people of Wisconsin. And I believe it was a tremendous rousing of success. My administration also was able to work with the other side of the aisle. I had to. Democrats controlled both houses of the legislature. I had to work, but I wanted to. So different what we're seeing in government today. Yeah, right. I always believe, ladies and gentlemen, that once you're elected, you should forget about the partisan differences and think about the people that you represent. <laughs>
including the land that is removed. It's going to ensure resources and recreational opportunities available for future generations. And under that law, my administration was able to purchase more land than at any other time or since in the history of our state. We protected this riverway. We protected the Chippewa flowage, the turtle flammable flowage, thousands of acres for fishermen, hunters, environmentalists, and people that for years to come will always have the opportunity to look at and say, the people in Wisconsin were smart to set this aside. And it was also during my first term as governor that a remarkable event occurred. The creation of the Lower Wisconsin State Riverway and Riverway Board. In 1988, or 1988, 1988, local legislators from the Riverway area, as you've heard, led by our friend, former Senator Dick Poole, and my very good friend that stayed with me today, Dale Schultz, along with Senators Brian Rood and Representative of Georgia County, David Brandon and Dwayne Johnson. They approached me about the DNR's Riverway proposal, which was causing, as you heard today, bad feelings among local residents. These legislators had convened a group of local officials to go over the DNR's plan and had come up with their own version of what the Riverway should look like and asked for my support for their plan. We put the local legislators' concept of the Riverway in the state budget. Spencer Black, introduced separate legislation at that time in the assembly that detailed his concept for the river. To me, what resulted was one of those important instances when a governor is required to make tough decisions and to govern in a liberal sense of the word. I instructed Pat Osborne and my staff to work with the local officials and the local legislators. They did. Spencer Black, Jim Curtis, Gail Schultz, Dave Brandon, Pat Osborne, came up with a mutually agreed on plan for the riverway for my review. People don't understand this. You had the United States government that had a plan, the DNR that had a plan, the local citizens that had a plan, Spencer Black that had a plan. Do you think something like that could happen? Every single one of them had strong feelings and beliefs. And not to say that anybody was wrong. But every single person in group realized that if we were going to have success, we had to compromise. We had to reach an agreement. Signed that Act 31 on August 3rd of that year, 1989. River Riverway Law became effective on October 31st, 1989. And ladies and gentlemen, I've had many accomplishments that I take pride in from my time as governor in this great state. Among those items today, ladies and gentlemen, is definitely the creation of the Riverway Park. In addition to preserving 92 miles of river, and almost 80,000 acres of land. The law created the Riverway Board to assure a strong local voice was had and had and administered the regulations. And for 25 years, the board's local representatives and every single one of you that serve on that board, my heart goes out to you and I say thank you. You fulfilled your obligations with pride and dignity and great diplomacy. Your integrity has always been there with a focus on keeping those scales balanced between civic protection and protection of private property rights. And for all the former and current board members in attendance today, why don't you all stand up so we can give you all a big round of applause because you deserve it. All the former and existing board members.
connection to the lower Wisconsin Riverway and recognize this river, the valley, as a precious resource that it is. But we also need to thank the true heroes for the success of the project, which are the Riverway's private landowners. These are the people who have accepted a new responsibility to protect the resource by cooperating with the Riverway Board in making sacrifices to keep this place spectacular for future generations. And as some of the speakers have said, in 25 years, I won't be here. But I hope a lot of you will be. And the people will always be saying thank you. Thank you for the leadership. I want to express my appreciation to many TNR employees. Worked on the Riverway project over many years, and you've done a great job. From the planners back in the 1980s to the new generation of foresters and wildlife biologists today, thank you for your hard work and your dedication. Now I would like to recognize Mark Cup and his staff for the tireless work of this project. When I came down here, and Mark became the executive director, I had a chance to have a very confidential conversation with him. And I was worried that Mark would take this for a year or two and then do something else. I knew him from my legislative days. I knew him from being governor. I knew him as a tremendous ability his ethics, his integrity, and his love for this river. And I asked him to dedicate himself to this and to stay for as long as he could. Never expected 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, we owe a big round of applause for Mark Cup because this project would not be successful today if it would not have been for his dedication. Compromise. Don't have to give up your principles, but willing to 
to work for the betterment of all of us. I thank you.
A score and a four. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how you slice it, that's a significant chunk of time. 25 years as the river man does take a toll on a person. There's now gray in my hair. My younger brothers like to remind me there's less of it. And as you can see, I'm nothing but skin and bones. <laughs> <laughs> At least, hopefully, I'm older and wiser. I have many people to thank today. I would like to start with my family and friends, many of you who are here today. The Cup, Ewing, Cook, and Warren clans have been supportive of me and the Riverway. And I can't help but thank you. my grandparents, Earl and Beulah Ewing, who have been so proud to be here today and see the success of the Riverway Project. I know they are here in spirit. Of the prominent ladies in my life, Elizabeth and Aunt Carrie, thank you so much for your support of me over the years as I've been on my Riverway journey. And Sam, my best buddy and favorite pal. <laughs> I'm proud of you, son. And I thank you for the sacrifices you had to make growing up and sharing your dad with the Riverway Project. Thank you to the Riverway Board members, current and former, for their continued confidence in me. And thank you for your selfless dedication to the concept of protecting scenic beauty and making tough decisions when needed. And as Dale alluded to, doing it for very little financial Generation. <laughs> the success of the project rests on the shoulders of the 30 Wisconsinites who have served on the Riverway Board since its inception. I thank you for sharing your time, your wisdom, and your friendship. Thank you to Marcia Curtis, an office associate with the Riverway Board for 13 years over half of the project's life, and to her predecessors, uh, all who have made significant contributions to the success of the project. Thank you to the dozens of people who served on the DNR Citizens Advisory Committee and Local Officials Advisory Committee during the planning process. Your thoughtful deliberations back in the 1980s has, have brought us to the point today where we celebrate 25 years of the Wisconsin Riverway. I also want to thank my colleagues from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources who worked on creation of the Riverway and those who continue to work on the project. As some of you may know, in certain circles in southwest Wisconsin, the merits of the DNR are not universally embraced. <laughs> in fact, the very first press release I sent out as executive director of Riverway Board was, Riverway Board is not the DNR. <laughs> some may have thought that was a shrewd move. I considered it self-preservation. <laughs> Some of my friends, after hearing me repeat the mantra, Riverway Board is not the DNR, I do not work for the DNR, actually bought me a sweatshirt that says, no, I do not work for the DNR. <laughs> I came across that just a couple weeks ago. I was going to wear it today, but it's a little snug. <laughs> there are so many DNR colleagues that I have worked with over the years, and I have the greatest respect for <coughs> I think uh, a former Riverway coordinator, Dave Jetson, a former Riverway foresters, Bill Carlson, and Brad Hutnick. I apologize for all those I'm not naming, but I want to thank you for your assistance and helping me as we had this mutual objective of protecting the Lower Wisconsin State Riverway. And I also want to recognize the DNR professionals that I deal with pretty much on a daily basis. In addition to the scenic and natural resources of the Riverway, one of the Valley's greatest assets are the uh, often unrecognized DNR professionals who toil away selflessly to implement the goals and objectives of the project. So you're an important part of the success of the Riverway, and thank you so much for your contributions for all the DNR friends. <laughs> Friends of the Lower Wisconsin Riverway, better known as Flo, for 
their tireless advocacy on behalf of the riverway, and their efforts in conducting river cleanups, paddling adventures, other outdoor experiences, fully going after the concept of no child left inside. <laughs> Uh, 
Terry and Suzanne Shiflett and your extended family.
To assure lands visible from the river are included within the project, exclude some other lands, but in essence to assure that all landowners are treated fairly and so that the goals of the riverway will be fully realized. And last, we need to restore adequate funding for the Riverway Land Acquisition Program administered by DNR, including restoration of the original Riverway Scenic Easement Program, which did not require public access as part of the sale of the scenic easement. And I'm not saying accomplishing these tasks will be easy, but I truly believe these three items are crucial to the success of the Riverway and as we look forward to the next 25 years of the project. I'd like to close by reading a poem I wrote for the 20th anniversary of the project. Afterwards, so please help yourself to cake and offer refreshments and there any hors d'oeuvres left. And Packers don't kick off till 325. So <laughs> <laughs> Remember to grab a copy of the books from uh, Tom Oates, the former dean of the UW Richland, that were donated by UW Richland for us to give away today. And uh, feel free to speak to any of our honored guests. And also, please thank the landowner. I wrote this in conjunction with the 20th anniversary. It's my ode to the Riverway. Thousands and thousands of years ago, sheets of ice surround the valley. The ice begins to melt. Trickle by trickle, a giant lake forms to the north. The ice dam bursts, a cataclysmic torrent of water cascades south and west and shapes the landscape. The sun warms the earth, plants grow and animal thrive, animals thrive. Paleo-Indians successfully hunt a mastodon. Death begets life in the ancient valley. Who will tell the story of the old ones 20 years from now? I wonder. Twelve millennia pass. The effigy mound builders are here, the bird people. Earthworks are created, telling profound stories on the land, tumuli in the shapes of eagles and hawks, bears, water spirits, and even man. Linear and conical mounds for the revered dead. Calendar mounds to track the sun. Cave walls speak through art. Redhorn lives on in a secluded coulee. Who will tell the tales of the mound builders 50 years from now? I wonder. <clears throat> Six more centuries elapsed, the new ones arrived. Marquette and Joliet, Carver and Schoolcraft, Redbird and Blackhawk, Temp Fate, fade into history. The Ho Chunk people are removed, but come back and stay. John Coon Farms, Henry Dodge rises to power, John Muir walks along the tracks and cogitates. Reuben Goldthwaite paddles down the river and pontificates. Aldo Leopold thinks Frank Lloyd Wright designs. August Derlip writes, who will be the new ones 100 years from now? I wonder. The 21st century dawns, and still a blue ribbon of water meanders through evanescent, tawny sandbars. And still a sparkling river flows past vine-clad islands and emerald-bound shores. And still a full moon rises, casting light upon the shimmering, diamond-studded stream. And still, Bottomland forests are heavy with rime, slumbering beneath a new blanket of snow. And still, majestic bluffs maintain a silent, eternal vigil over the valley below. What will this landscape and this river look like in the 23rd century? I wonder. A thousand years from this day, who will be here to watch in silent adoration as a bald eagle soars overhead, silhouetted against a clear blue sky? Who will be here to thrill at the primordial call of the sandhill crane proclaiming spring has arrived? Who will be here to listen to the susurrus of wind in the trees whispering stories of retrospection? Who will be here to stand amidst the effigy mounds and contemplate the legacy of those who have gone before? Who will be here to recognize the powerful spirit of this special place, the valley, of the river, thousand eyes. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. My name is Forrest Yonke. I work for Crawford Stewardship Project. I'm really happy to be here today to celebrate the Riverway, 
and the Riverway Board and all the amazing organizations that have helped make this project happen and have helped keep this area beautiful and have really, so many people have really stepped forward to protect the natural environment here and promote good stewardship practices and really create something beautiful that we can have here in this area for generations to come. And Crawford Stewardship Project is in support of the board in its decision to protect the riverway from crack sand mining and other destructive practices that could threaten what we've spent so much time and energy and money to create over the last years. So we look forward to the river and the community in this area continuing to flourish and I'd like to congratulate the board and the Riverway for the last 25 years and the board in the future. Hi, I'm Ed Hudson. I grew up in Maisel, Maine, Wisconsin and moved to Spring Green about four years ago. And uh, I'd always been aware of the Wisconsin River but not directly involved with in it. And uh, that I saw in the local paper there was a uh, Rhythm on the River event right here happening at, at this very spot. So out of curiosity, I thought I'd just come down and see what that was about. And I learned that day that, that one of my local friends, Dave Jetson, was very involved with Tim Zum in cleaning up the river in previous years, and that there was an organization called Friends of the Lord Wisconsin River. And so between Dave and Tim and I, started talking and the more I heard the more I liked and eventually ended up joining the board of directors of Flow and uh, because I semi-retired, had some time and thought well it's time that I get involved in something rather than wait for the other guy to do it. So that's kind of how I got involved with Flow and I've had a good time, there's been a lot of good projects that we've done since I've uh, came on board and, and a lot of good things that they did before. I am Tim Zum, uh, president of the Friends of Lower Wisconsin Riverway. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this uh, video of the uh, fantastic speeches or stories that these folks have shared with us. And uh, to me especially, I hope you can pick up on the great wisdom that these speakers have and, and the wisdom that was involved with the formation of the Riverway and keeping it going. Uh, it is my hope that uh, we can all learn from what's been done in the past so we can continue into the future uh, with uh, a fantastic program as such. For myself personally, uh, my youngest son is 50 years younger than I am. And so I hope that not just 25 years from now at the next anniversary, Riverway, uh, uh, or 50 years it'll be then, but you know, even 50 years from now, my youngest son will be as old as I am right now today. And I hope that this river we have here is as good as and even better than it is today. 